There comes a time in every geek's life where they have to ask themselves, themselves, them, you know, whatever. Do I need this? And I think we've all said that at some point in our lives. I mean, this is coming from the guy who owns three Xbox Ones. With good reason, I think. But still, the point stands, guys. Do we need most of our technology? Probably not. Uh, we usually want it, not need it. So I got thinking the other day, what if I downgrade from 65 inches of 4K goodness to 50 inches of 1080p goodness? Could I do it? Can I actually handle such a significant downgrade? I don't prefer to deal with such a big downgrade, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So this is my story about downgrading from 4K to 1080p. I know exactly what you're thinking. David, your link is clickbait. Well, yeah, kinda, I'm not gonna lie, but it's not technically false. I am downgrading from 4K to 1080p, but only in regards to my bedroom in this house. The other house is still my main house in regards to entertainment, my office and all that stuff. But as you guys know, my weekend vlog viewers, I'm in the process of turning this room into my bedroom. So I figured, well, you kind of need a TV for your bedroom. I mean, a bedroom without a TV is kind of weird. It's like a bedroom without a bed. What the hell's the point? So I treated myself to a sharp 50 inch 1080p TV. I'll pick it up in a second. But the best part, I saved $100 by using two $50 Best Buy gift cards through famebit.com. I'll link them right below. Famebit, for those who don't know, is a video sharing creation platform where basically you can get paid through YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all those social networks. It's great. Uh, but over the years, I've been racking up points and I haven't used those points until this past week. So I figured why not knock $100 off a sharp 50 inch TV. Now, normally I would go for a much better brand, something like Samsung or Sony, because I'll proudly admit this. I'm a brand snob. I don't use junk, um, but I wanted something from a somewhat reasonable, or uh, reputable, rather, brand. So, I went with the Sharp. I got it for like 180 or 280? Either way, I saved $100, which I'm very happy with. Now, I would have went with a 4K TV for like $200 more, but you can only get those TVs in that price uh, range from brands like Insignia and Westinghouse. And no offense to anyone who uses those brands, I'm just not a fan. Like I said, I'm a brand snob. So Sharp is the best thing I'm gonna get right now. Um, and then eventually I'll get a 4K TV from a more reputable brand like Samsung. Hey, I'm kind of a Samsung fanboy when it comes to TVs, if you haven't noticed. Okay, so what is this TV gonna be used for? Well, honestly, mostly Netflix, HBO Go, and eventually my current Apple TV because at some point Apple's gonna to have to replace that Apple TV with a 4K compatible Apple TV. So the Apple TV that's in my house right now, right over there, will eventually come over here. But for now, I'm gonna use the built-in apps on here. I think it has Roku built-in, I'm not sure. But either way, my first generation Xbox One is gonna come over here actually tonight. You guys aren't seeing this until Tuesday, but you'll learn more in the weekend vlog. So there's my plan. For now, I'm just gonna use the apps built into the TV, as well as my first generation Xbox One. I think that's a good plan, right? All right, enough chatter. 
Let's unbox it. There you have it, 50 inch Sharp 1080p TV. And this is a Best Buy exclusive TV, which is very interesting. In the box, you get a stand in two pieces. And I gotta say, from the pictures I saw online, the stand is pretty, pretty ugly. But we'll see, we'll see. Obviously things can look different in person. And confirmed, this is indeed a Roku TV, which is very cool. And of course, you get your typical power cable, manual, which I will not be reading, and some screws, maybe for mounting. I'm not, oh no, the uh, screws are for the stands. I was gonna say, I highly doubt they would give you any kind of mounting hardware. I'm not gonna lie, it's very nice having multiple TVs. All right, so let's take the foam off and set this thing up. Child safety. Doesn't apply to me. All right, this is the scary part. And by the way, my bedroom is far from finished, so please don't judge me. I saw a couple comments saying, David, your floor is not finished. You think? We just moved in. This is a big house. Okay, it's not a big, big house, but it's a lot of work. We're doing one room at a time. Hey. All right, let's do this. Can I do this by myself? I sure hope so. The bezel's not too bad, actually. I'm just so spoiled by my Samsung TV. Oh God. Lay it down flat. Get down out of here. Man, it is amazing the differences you see when you're coming from like a $1,400 TV to a $300 TV. Look how thick the bottom is. But hey, I'm not gonna diss it. I got this thing for an excellent price. Okay, now that the TV is out of the plastic, let's get the stand out of the plastic and get it set up. Not so fast, gotta get the drill. There are four screws total, and I believe the uh, remote uses AAA batteries, just as a heads up. Just wanna get this set up and see how it looks. just seconds away. By the way, I had to change drill bits, uh, just as a heads up. Make sure that the screws are nice and tight because when dealing with a TV stand, you do not want to take any chances. Okay, moment of truth, here we go. By the way, isn't this a sweet angle? It gets everything in frame. I love this lens, I do. All right, here we go, Sharp. Don't let me down. It's actually not that heavy. Ironically, the box is probably heavier than the TV. Hmm, and I gotta be honest, the stand doesn't look half bad. Okay, I'm thinking maybe that is a little crowded, the speaker's right there, so I might put him down here. Not a big deal, right? If anything, it could look pretty cool. 
All right, let's get the power cord in and see if it works. Actually, the speakers might stay there. Doesn't look that bad. And plus, if I'm watching TV or playing video games from back here, I don't want the audio outputting and hitting the bed. That just wouldn't sound too great. And side note, please take off your energy guide stickers. You'd be surprised at how often I see people with stickers still on their TV. And take the plastic off, it's one of the best parts about getting a new TV. So satisfying. Look at that. Very, very smooth. Look at all that plastic. All right, this video is getting a little long, so let's turn this TV on, wrap it up, and I'll get back into the weekend of Lockety Vlog. This lens is pretty dusty, too. <sighs> the moment of truth. Does it turn on? The standby light's already on. Here we go. It's thinking. Okay, cool. Sharp. Roku TV. Very nice. This is the first boot, so it's gonna take a little while. So let it do its thing, guys. Let it do its thing. In the meantime, how are you guys? Let me know. Oh, oh, it's done. I think I'm English, right? Bidoo. Set up for home use. Wireless scan. All right, cool. I'm gonna set this up off camera because obviously I need to get the Wi-Fi connected. And I'm gonna start playing. I love new TV purchases. There are very few tech purchases that are more exciting than a new TV. Come on guys, don't you agree? So again, I will link this TV right below on Best Buy. I'll link the Vanity Transparent One speakers on Amazon right below. Uh, they do have optical support, and I believe this TV has optical out support, which is amazing, so I can just route the audio through them. It's just gonna be great. I might buy a subwoofer eventually. I probably don't need one for my bedroom, but then again, as I said before, I don't need one, but do I want one? Hell yeah. Thanks guys for watching, your support means a lot, and I'll see you next time. Peace.